uh, uh, hi Gayatri, this is Bob Jan here, uh, the hi. Hoop trainer. So, uh, yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you very well. And uh, uh, how about the screen share? Can you see my screen? Ah, uh, one second. Let me try. I cannot see. Yes, all I can see is Dheeraj class. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, I that's fine. That's yes, the one. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, Gayatri, let's get started. So uh, the, the course is uh, the Hadoop developer training, right? So uh, uh, I think uh, you are looking for a developer training itself, right? Not the admin administration uh, training, right? Yes, or the developer one, not the admin one. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. Right. So let's first uh, get uh, get into uh, the course content. So let's see what we, uh, what all this uh, course gets covered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, so and this uh, training would be around some thirty-five to forty hours of training in total, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, so these are the topics that uh, we cover, right? So uh, the first one would be the in, uh, introduction to Hadoop, right? So here we'll talk mm -hmm. about uh, uh, big data concepts and what are the challenges, right? Mm -hmm. What are the design philosophies of Hadoop and uh, various types of data, right? So structured, okay. unstructured, structured, right? So, and then we'll talk about uh, uh, various states of data and we'll mm -hmm. uh, mostly uh, this this would be kind of a theory right so introductory session right okay and we'll, we'll try to understand what is big data and all right so how companies are using big data what are the high level uh, uh, overview of uh, hadoop core technologies and all right mm -hmm. and then okay. we'll slowly we'll slowly we'll move into hadoop technology stack so wherein we'll uh, uh, discuss about various projects associated with hadoop like for example you might be hearing a lot of buzzwords like big hive scoop uh, yes. Flume, right? so mm -hmm. many many other things, right? So they are not actually Hadoop. They, they are uh, uh, other projects that are related to closely related to Hadoop, right? So which in which uh, operate tightly in conjunction with Hadoop, right? Okay. So we will we'll have a brief overview of each of these technologies uh, mm -hmm. during this uh, session, and mm -hmm. we'll also look into some Hadoop implementations, right? Okay. Right. So, and then so we proceed into. Uh, Hadoop distributed file system, which is the prime component of Hadoop. It is one of the core components of Hadoop, right? So it stands for uh, Hadoop distributed file system. Right? So wherein we'll discuss about what is HDFS and how Hadoop uh, you, uh, leverages HDFS in order to uh, function, right? And okay. uh, we'll also talk about HDFS node types, and we'll also look into HDFS node responsibilities. What what uh, what does the HDFS node do, and what it does? What is its role in 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 a, in a Hadoop cluster and all? And then we'll look into various topologies so that uh, can be configured in a Hadoop cluster. So which is a single uh, single cluster or multi rack topologies, right? We'll okay. look into those. And then uh, so these are these are the more kind of uh, HDFS architecture things what we are okay. uh, covering in this uh, third session right okay. and then we'll uh, look into hdfs block management and uh, here in this block management we'll try to understand what uh, uh, i mean we'll try to understand how hdfs stores data right how hdfs internally uh, stores the data in the format of blocks and all right so okay. we'll discuss in uh, in great detail uh, in that and then mm -hmm. finally, we'll look into some of the uh, uh, HDFS administration tools. That is, uh, some of the tools that, that come with uh, uh, HDFS. So uh, which tools do we use to interact with HDFS? There is basically some few commands to interact with HDFS. OK. Right, so uh, how to create a file, delete a file, or so, so uh, some uh, basic HDFS operations. We'll look into that. And then, so we'll get introduced ourselves to MapReduce, so which is a distributed uh, framework, right? So for processing the data, right? So MapReduce is the second core component of Hadoop, next to HDFS, 
right so here we'll try to understand what is map reduce and how uh, how it can be used to perform parallel processing and all right so we'll also mm -hmm. understand the map reduce architecture we'll also cover uh, various components of map reduce component like job tracker task tracker right so and the various phases during the map reduce uh, program execution right and okay. then so we'll also have a demo program right so we'll run a run a small uh, map reduce sample application to demonstrate map reduce functionality on a local hadoop cluster okay so and then slowly we'll move into so this this will be an introductory session to each of these tools right so hdfs and uh, map reduce uh, later we would be uh, discussing about uh, the installation part of uh, hadoop cluster right so we'll see how uh, how we can set up a hadoop cluster so although this is uh, something which is not directly related to hadoop development course right so there's a the sections 5 and 6 Right, so mm -hmm. they are, they are more focused on uh, the administrative part, but still we'll we'll get them covered so that it will give you as an understanding of how uh, things are connected. So right. so that we can better understand. So we we can uh, when we know how things are connected, right? So we'd be in a better position to program it, right? So we'll Correct. just cover these two things. So the first one would be installing uh, Hadoop in a single node cluster, right? So which is, here we have. Uh, a pseudo distributed configuration right uh, so hadoop cluster running in pseudo distributed configuration we'll see what it is right i uh, will try to understand uh, how it can be configured and so we'll uh, look into the various steps uh, in configuring hadoop right mm -hmm. and finally once we set it up so we'll start the hadoop cl cluster right mm -hmm. so same is the case in case of uh, multi node cluster uh, setup as well right so only thing is here we'll be utilizing multiple nodes uh, to form a cluster, right? So here it is. Uh, uh, here the uh, Hadoop services will be running on only one node in single node, and in multi nodes so we'll have a failover and all, right? So we'll have multiple nodes and all. We'll, we'll look into that. So how, how we uh, we call them as master slaves, and we can have multiple data nodes there. So we'll uh, we'll cover about that. So this um, master slave and all. So. Uh, okay. We might have some, uh, I mean, the concepts we might have co already covered in HDFS, right? So we'll use them and then we'll set up our Hadoop cluster, right? And then uh, start the Hadoop cluster, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so once we have set this, uh, set up this, right? So uh, five and six, uh, right? either five or six, depending upon our requirement. So uh, we'll go ahead and use the same cluster for uh, throughout the course. Right, so we'll use the same cluster to perform all our uh, uh, operations. Right, so later on we'll add more products to it, and then so we'll be using the cluster on a regular basis. Right, so we'll use the same cluster. We don't go with a different or any other uh, machine. Mm -hmm. Right, so once we install and conf uh, configure it, right, so this includes configuration part also. Right, and mm -hmm. once we do that, so we'll look into some few basic troubleshooting techniques. Right, so this this also gets covered some administrative uh, aspects. Right, so we'll also look into how to perform benchmark operations on a cluster. Right, so how do you benchmark? How do you justify that your cluster is, uh, um, I mean, uh, performing optimally and all? Right, so we'll look into some of the benchmarking tools like TerraGen and TerraSort during this session. Right, mm -hmm. so once this is done, so we'll look into managing HDFS. Right. So okay. here in this session, managing HDFS. So we'll. Uh, this is a kind of extension to session. Uh, session three, right? So session in session three, we'll just have an introductory session to HDFS. Right. So now we'll just get deeper. Uh, we'll just dive deeper into managing uh, HDFS. That is. So we'll try to find some data, sample data, and try to push data into HDFS. So we'll see here. We'll see how how we populate data into Hadoop Hadoop cluster. Right. And then mm -hmm. so we'll uh, also look into tools like DFS admin and uh, FSCK and some other tools related to uh, HDFS, right? And we'll also uh, put some light on uh, uh, configuring rack awareness. So we'll see how how rack awareness can be rack awareness feature of Hadoop can be leveraged to uh, to get the best out of Hadoop cluster in a uh, data center environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, in the ninth session, the map reduce development. So this is uh, this is an extension session to the introductory map. Uh, inter, uh, I mean, introduction to map reduce session. 
right so here in this session so we we will discuss uh, the architecture of a map reduce i mean uh, we have already covered that in a, a map reduce introduction section right so here we will have an anatomy of a map reduce job so that is basically we will take a, a sample map reduce job that is basically a map reduce job which are, which we have already uh, uh, executed demonstrated that in the earlier session uh, in the earlier map reduce session so we'll take it and uh, so we'll uh, we'll explore it right so we'll cut it open and see the various parts what are the things uh, what are the, what is what are the pieces of code so that uh, uh, that is running right so we will try to inspect it right so we will uh, mm -hmm. we'll try to inspect it various components of a map reduce job that is uh, we'll open up the java code and then we'll look into that right so the program and okay. then the development process right so we'll also look into the uh, development process of a map reduce program so how to write a map reduce program so we'll we, here we'll try to understand how how to write a map reduce program new map reduce program right from scratch Mm -hmm. And then uh, in and then we'll have a live demonstration of how to code. So that basically we'll uh, we'll execute the program whichever we have built, right? And then so we'll uh, run this MapReduce program on our Hadoop cluster that we had built in the earlier session. Right. Okay. So by the end of this session, so uh, we should be in a position to understand all the Hadoop concepts, right? And how Hadoop works. And what is a HDFS? Uh, what is HDFS and MapReduce and various components of HDFS and various components of MapReduce and how to develop a MapReduce program and how to uh, run it on a, a cluster, right? So this will conclude HD uh, Hadoop uh, related stuff. So mo most probably we may look into some other examples as well based on our requirement, right? So let's see how it goes there, right? So after that, so we have. Uh, uh various tools to cover like pig and hive pig hive scoop and all right so mm -hmm. we'll get started with the uh, uh, tools right so the additional tools in the hadoop ecosystem right so the first tool that we get started with is pig right so we'll start with pig right so we'll try to understand what is pig right so how it is related to hadoop what it does right so what are the various components of pig Right, and then so basically, it is a scripting language for Hadoop. Right, so we'll see how 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 it simplifies our uh, uh, hassle of working with uh, Hadoop. Right, so how we can mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how to how we can uh, query data uh, using pig against some HDFS data. Right, and mm -hmm. we'll see various components, and we'll also look into the uh, pig Latin language, that is basically the scripting language of pig. Right, and then we'll also mm -hmm. look into how to install and configure Pig. So now that uh, we have our uh, Hadoop cluster set up, right? So what we'll do is so we'll just add uh, the Pig component to it, right? So we'll introduce Pig. Uh, we will install and configure Pig and connect it with the Hadoop cluster, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and then we'll see some uh, uh, demo programs on Pig Latin, how to use Pig Latin and all, right? So next, uh, the next session would be developing with Pig. So here in this session, so we'll uh, we'll see how we'll actually get deeper, right? So we'll dig deeper into the Pig programs. So we'll try to see what is a grunt shell, and we'll also look into uh, various commands uh, of, of Pig, like uh, load, store, filter, group, or aggregate, and some other uh, example, uh, some other commands. Right. So we'll uh, discuss in detail these commands. So how to use them and uh, how we can use. This is just like more kind of a C, uh, SQL query type uh, kind of thing. Right. So we'll see that. Right. So we'll also see look into the differences between uh, SQL and uh, Pig and all. Right. And okay. then uh, we will look into some various um, sample programs on joining and how to combine and split data in uh, Pig. Right, and we'll mm -hmm. also look into the user-defined functions. So basically, we'll see how how we can create a user-defined function of our own and uh, use it in Pick. Right. So next in the uh, next next the next component is would be a Hive. Right. So uh, here we'll get introduced uh, ourselves to Hive, and we'll see uh why uh, what is the importance of high and how it is related to sql or what are the similarities or differences between high and sql right so mm -hmm. and we will look into the various components of high that is basically we'll see the uh, architecture of high and uh, we'll look into the various uh, commands or tools related to high right 
and then mm -hmm. we'll install and configure Hive and we'll so run some few queries to demonstrate uh, that uh, Hive has been successfully installed and working. Okay. So, okay. and in the later session, so we'll uh, uh, we'll dig uh, deeper and uh, we'll explore Hive in great detail. Right? So basically, we'll see uh, concepts like uh, uh, how to create partitions and how to create tables of two types, basically internal internal tables and external tables. Right. And we'll also look into how to populate data uh, into Hive tables. Right. Right. So, or how mm -hmm. to query data from HDFS using Hive and all. Right, and we'll also look into some uh, dynamic partition, uh, dynamic partitioning techniques. Right, and we'll mm -hmm. also look into how to create and manage, uh, create and manage views and indexes. Okay. Right. And then, so the next tool would be HBase. Right, so we'll look into what uh, is HBase and why HBase is used. What is uh, the purpose of HBase and how we can use HBase uh, to work with the uh, column-oriented data. Uh, I mean column oriented data, right? So we'll also look into the differences between uh, row oriented data stores and column oriented data stores, right? And then we'll uh, look into the HBase architecture, right? So mm -hmm. wherein we cover about what is a, a HBase master or a server and what are HBase region servers, right? And then how they are connected and all. So we'll look into the architecture things of HBase and followed by, so once, um, yeah, so here we'll also set up, install, and configure HBase. Uh, maybe it is not listed here, right? So once we install and configure HBase, uh, we can create, load, and drop. Uh, uh, I mean, we will see how to work with uh, data in uh, work with uh, tables in case of HBase. That is basically we'll create few tables and populate it with some data and uh, perform some operations on the data, right? Okay. And then the developing with HBase, so we'll dig more deeper. In, Right, so by working with HBase, right, so we will see uh, what are the ways in which we can access the data in HBase and uh, how to configure a fully distributed HBase cluster. Right, so basically just like a Hadoop, right, so HBase can also be configured in various different uh, uh, modes. Right, so we'll see uh, uh, we'll see both uh, single standalone and distributed HBase cluster as well, and then so we'll load uh, some data into HBase table using uh, PIG. Right, so we'll uh, we'll use the earlier tool that we had set up, that is big, to populate some data into HBase tables. So and we'll also look into uh, querying data uh, using Hive. Right, so we'll also try to read some data using Hive in HBase. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next uh, next component would be a zookeeper, right? So we'll see it. We'll try to understand what is zookeeper and what is the role of zookeeper in, in a Hadoop cluster, right? So we'll look okay. into zookeeper architecture. So we'll see what are the various components of uh, uh, zookeeper, right? So basically the Z nodes, uh, right, and all, right? And uh, so we'll uh, we'll also try to understand how data is internally stored in zookeeper, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, here we'll try to understand what is the role of Zookeeper in a Hadoop cluster. Basically, uh, it is used for metadata sharing and kind of things. So we'll get that covered. Right. Okay. Although it is not directly related to our Hadoop development, but uh, uh, the some of the components of Hadoop internally make use of Zookeeper. Right. So okay. we'll try to understand how 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 they do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Next is Scoop. Scoop is one more important uh, tool in Hadoop ecosystem. So, which uh, wherein we'll be regularly interacting uh, as a Hadoop developer, right? So, we'd be uh, regularly interacting with this tool, uh, also to load and populate data into uh, a Hadoop cluster, into HDFS, right? Or mm -hmm. into the Hive or Big, whatever it is. Right? So, we'll, this is basically used uh, to move data in and out of your Hadoop and uh, RDBMS systems. So we'll uh, try to install and configure Scoop, and uh, we'll see how to populate data, how to import and export data into Hadoop clusters, right? Uh -huh. So this is what uh, this gets covered, right? So uh, as part uh, as part of uh, examples in this session, right? So we'll set up our uh, own database server, like basically MySQL or anything, right? So even a, a SQL server will also do, right? So and we'll try to export some data from there into Hadoop. Okay. And then well, vice versa, whatever it is. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, there is 
fun session called Hadoop distribution. So wherein we wherein we'll talk about uh, various Hadoop distributions. You might have already heard like uh, Cloudera or Hortonworks, right? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll try to understand what what these are, right? And how how they are related to what we have learned and all. Right. So we'll also uh, look into how to set up uh, the Cloudera or Horton Hortonworks distributions on your machine, right? So basically, yeah. uh, right. So as part of that, so we'll see how to download and set it up and uh, run some few sample programs on those virtual machines. And okay. here, additionally, uh, I mean, if you want, so we can set these uh, distributions up on a on a on a cloud environment as well, right? So I'm not okay. going to cover that cloud as such, but because that doesn't make I mean, there isn't any much difference. Uh, so it okay. uh, it is same as good as uh, you you set up a local virtual machine, right? So it yeah. does do the same job, right? So we, we'll see yeah. that. So we'll see okay. on possibilities on uh, doing so. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So this this way this is an entire course kind of content so that would be covering right so throughout the uh, training right so as we okay. discussed right uh, as I told you so it would be uh, in total of 35 to 40 hours of training right okay. so since we are uh, taking the taking uh, taking this course on a on a weekend basis right so, right, right. so Saturday and Sunday so we'll try yeah. uh, we'll try to uh, have some uh, two to three hours of session a day all right okay. so. Uh, right so okay. so in total for so three three hours a day means so per week so we'll be having six hours of session right so maybe oh. uh, maybe in uh, 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 actually, five can we, four to four. right right i can um, could we do two hours instead two hours i'm okay if it runs a week more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we do two hours? Like yeah, not the... a problem. Yeah, okay. not a problem. Okay. That, that shouldn't be a problem. So okay. it, it it might take some around five to six weeks or seven weeks, based accordingly, right? So okay. yes, that's all. so one week here or there, it, it uh, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's fine. No, no issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now let's get started into our uh, first session, right? So this basically today would be a demo session. That's what uh, okay. I was conveyed. So as yes. part of the demo session, what I'm doing is I'm not uh, having a separate session for it as such, right? Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take up the first session itself, right? So the first uh, uh, first uh, first class of uh, uh, the training, which is Hadoop introduction to Hadoop. So we'll just okay. get this covered, right? So mm -hmm. that will give you an understanding of what uh, what is uh, uh, what is Hadoop and what is big data, so that uh, it will lay some foundation for the next coming topics. Okay. Right. So let's get started. Hadoop developer training. So this is introduction to Hadoop. Right. So when we say Hadoop, right. So what is your understanding? Right. So what is Hadoop? So you'll have to first define what is Hadoop. So let me know what is Hadoop. What all you know about Hadoop? What it is used for? Um, uh, as far as I have understood, so Hadoop is a framework. It is a framework mm -hmm. to uh, store data. Mm -hmm. So it's um, and it's a distributed framework. So that um, the the purpose is fast retrieval of data and mm -hmm. uh, the to re because the way the data is generated is so fast and mm -hmm. there is uh, and the volume of data is also so high so it's we need a framework to store and retrieve the data yes uh, exactly yeah yeah true so uh, as you said hadoop is a uh, uh, hadoop is a framework distributed framework for managing large data sets right so right. Huge okay. volume data sets that's what right. uh, you, you conveyed right, right. So exactly true right so what is hadoop is hadoop is a framework for managing large data sets large data sets in this here we call it as a uh, call it, uh, here with the actual term what we use is big data right okay. so hadoop is one big data technology for managing large data sets so that is what I want to have. So I want to get okay. the term big data out of you. So that is what. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 Big, uh, big, big, uh, big data technology. Right. Right. So, mm -hmm. okay. So uh, leave about the rest of the things. Now take up, uh, we'll take the term big data. What is big data? So we'll have to first understand this. What is big data? So before we understand big data, what is big data? 
right so let's take off big and we'll just try to understand data what is data can you define data in your own terms i don't need any concrete definition any definition of your own uh, uh, would, would do right? so as long as we uh, are understanding things yeah so so data is uh, it's a piece of information it could be any kind it could be a text data it could be a picture it's it's basically information yes correct so data is something so yeah your definition is also correct so it all it all depends on our perspective on data right so data is some text information or some media that we store right. or some right. information that we put into a database or some information we get out of some analytics or whatever it could be anything so but right. the very uh, the if you want to define it a more generic uh, in a more generic way so i put it this way right so mm -hmm. data is something that you store on a computer system right right Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, data is something that you store on a computer system and retrieve it at a later point of time. Okay. That is data, right? So, mm -hmm. that's it. So, if you want to store something for future, right? So, that is data, right? So, if you are storing right. some data, something on your machine, right? And, uh, and, you, and you wish to access that in future at a later mm -hmm. point of time it could be a, it could be any any later it could be maybe after a few seconds or it could be after a, a few days months years or decades it could be anything the the time time doesn't matter so if you want to access it at a later point of time so that is all data so you are persisting it you are storing it to access it at a later point of time that is what we do right so all the documents we store so why because so we want to access it in future the notes the presentations right so the images what we capture and all right mm -hmm. so so we we store them and then we retrieve at a later point of time so that is what data is right so now that we understood data so how do you measure data the volume oh. of data so there should be there should mm -hmm. be some metric for uh, every uh, every uh, measurable component right so what are the units for measuring uh, 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 data yeah you know we all Byte, know that yeah bytes yeah, yeah bytes bytes terabytes yeah. gigabytes yeah. yeah yes exactly so uh, data is uh, measured in the form of bytes right so uh, bytes kilobytes megabytes gigabytes mm -hmm. right so likewise right. so we might all be having some data gigabytes worth of data that we store not even gigabytes we, we have reached terabytes right terabytes uh -huh. right yeah. right so let's let's see how 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 the volume uh, how oh, i mean how it is measured right so let's see look into the units of measuring data right so first mm -hmm. is uh, we, we you have a byte right at the mm -hmm. very basic level you have bit right so bit, a bit is either a representational state of either zero or one right and then yeah. eight such bits form a byte right so we all know that so we have studied right and mm -hmm. then so 1024 such uh, bytes form one kilobyte so here i am starting with kilobyte right so one kilobyte is nothing but uh, so uh, two to the power 10 bits so mm -hmm. that's what and then so you have a megabyte so which is equivalent to 1024 kilobytes right and mm -hmm. then so you have a gigabyte which is equivalent to 1024 megabytes and then after gigabyte so you have a terabyte so which is equivalent to 1024 uh, gigabytes and then so you have a, a petabyte so which is equivalent to 1024 terabytes and then uh, you you might all be knowing uh, the units for measurement maybe till tera or peta right so beyond that so these are the uh, units so you have a exabyte so which is equivalent to 1024 petabytes and then you have a zettabyte which is equivalent to 1024 exabyte and one yettabyte so which is equivalent to 1024 uh, uh, zettabytes so recently some more few more uh, units have come up right? so i have not updated this document it's a presentation right so these are the metrics so don't worry so we are not worried about exadata zeta data and all right so the peta data so we'll we'll operate in this range terabyte and petabyte range right mm -hmm. so this is what okay. our focus is right so now that we understood the, the units of uh, uh, measuring the data right so now let's try to understand the states of data right right so mm -hmm. So the, the uh, when you now uh, when you said big data, right? So we said uh, we we now understood what is data, right? And what are the metrics for measuring data, right? So when you say big data, what does that mean? What is big data? 
big data is some uh, big data is anything the uh, any technology that manages huge data sets large data sets large volumes of data right mm -hmm. so how large is the question so uh, how large is the question right so so the, the uh, how large in the sense here we are talking about the volume right so how how large volumes let's say have you uh, have you uh, i forgot to ask you gayatri so no. i mean uh, uh are you comfortable with uh, the technologies like sql i mean uh, yes. so how comfortable are you with other technologies related yeah. technologies with her uh so i right now like i'm a data warehouse developer so i work in uh, like etl informatica uh -huh. and um okay. uh, Ter teradata mm -hmm. oracle oracle okay, and unix, unix scripting okay yeah. Okay, good. So that's a, that's a good sk uh, skill set to have uh, to get started with the uh, Hadoop, right? So oh, that's okay. a very good thing, right? Mm. So when you take uh, when you talk about volume, right? So what is the volume of data that is managed with your tools? Let's say uh, let me ask you this way. So now uh, you have worked with various types of databases. So what were mm. the volumes of data that uh, uh, you were dealing with? in your uh, in your tools in your database so was it uh, gigabytes what is it terabytes uh, worth of data right 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 now we are uh, dealing with terabytes actually it's about right. two terabytes now yeah yes it is terabytes in the yeah. terabyte range yes. so uh, gigabyte or terabyte so whatever right. they they might fall somewhere in this category but i yes. believe uh, you might not have uh, you might never have exceeded the terabyte range and, and penetrated into petabyte range right no yeah. no yeah right. we have yeah. yes yes so what what i was trying is uh, traditional databases right so they have the capacity they they have the ability to manage uh, gigabytes and terabytes volumes of data right so they did mm -hmm. not uh, have the ability or i don't mean to say they do not have the ability they are poor at managing very large volumes of data you can mm -hmm. manage petabytes of data also with tra traditional database that is manageable right so provided right. you have a good configuration and a good setup and uh, uh, good uh, uh, good uh, what do you say focus towards that right mm -hmm. so but it would be difficult it would be more difficult more complex it would be complex and it will be difficult challenging and uh, uh, we'll be uh, enter, uh, we'll be running into some performance issues when we right. handle large volumes of data right mm -hmm. so that is what hadoop is designed to handle very large volumes of data so the typically the data that we handle with hadoop right so will be in this range terabyte uh, and uh, petabyte range right okay. so database is the max out uh, in few gigabytes itself Right, so most of the database, right, so relational databases, right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about uh, data warehouses, right. So warehouses right. would be uh, uh, still very large. I'm talking about uh, the real-time processing of data, right. So right. which max out in few gigabytes itself. Right? So in data warehouse, yes. uh, we just store some data, right. Right, so right. we're not uh, uh, really processing anything there, right. Right, 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 right. So now, if you look at uh, the volume of data now that we have mentioned about volume right so volume is just one factor in Hadoop uh, big uh, in, in in big data right so when you are de dealing with uh, when you say you're dealing with big data right so it it, it implies that uh, you're dealing with large volumes of data but but not restricted to that so there are other factors also which we have to take take into consideration so which is velocity and variety right so volume talks about the large volumes Right, so right. how big your data volumes are, right? So mm -hmm. see here. So if you look at the graph here on the left hand side, so this is this is showing the data volumes. Of course, we don't have any units listed here, but just a rough figure, right? So in 2011, if you see, look at the data volumes, right? So mm -hmm. that we were we, that we used to handle, it is very low. So year by year, it is increasing, right? So 2013, mm -hmm. 14, right? So uh, if you look at the trend, right? So see. Uh, it is growing very at a very faster rate, right? So here mm -hmm. the, the caption below it shows, says 90% of the data uh, in the world, right? So is created in the last two years. With this statement, we can try to understand uh, how much volume of data uh, we are generating day by day, right? Right. At the moment, so the data volume generation is very high. 
so we are generating a lot of uh, data when compared to uh, the past right right next so uh, there is one more graph on the right hand side right so if you look, uh, look at this graph right so this uh, this graph is plotted uh, uh, for every decade starting from 1970 to 2000 till uh, sorry 2010 so it will it is showing you a trend of uh, the data volumes how how they are rising right so in somewhere be in 1990 mid 1990 it started uh, sorry initially it started booming somewhere in mid 1980s and then so it grew till mid 1990 so and then it started so the and there so the curve will get split into two parts so the bottom curve and then the top curve so which started growing very exponentially Right. So, what is the split here? Is so here the split is uh, here the type of data, right? So earlier, so we used to have only one type of data, so which is all structured data. So everything when you in the past when you say data, it was all structured, right? So it's it's not it's implied that it is a uh, it is a table, right? So wherein you have uh, multiple fields or multiple columns right uh, and then so you insert data in, in the format of rows that is what uh, data was in the past right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now this is not the case so now we have various types of data so we have uh, images text documents right so and some uh, 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 videos multi all multimedia contents that needs to be processed that is all the data right so that mm -hmm. is all the data right so here we are not restricted to one type of data which is structured so here we have unstructured data as well right so that is right. what we have to do. right so now that we have mentioned uh, uh, about unstructured data so there are three types of uh, data that is available to us so one is structured data all right so the other one is unstructured and one is semi structured data structured data we all know about structured data so what is structured data so uh, yes uh, structured data is something so which has got uh, which which has a common structure associated with that so basically if you want to say in layman terms any data that can be put in a relational database management system is structured data so wherein you have a table right so uh, which comprises of rows and columns right so all the data that you can store into a structured uh, data uh, structured uh, data set uh, is all like data right so every row in that uh, in uh, in a table of uh, rdbms system is similar to that of every other row right what the point right so what what what, yeah. what means a structured data right so we are we, we all have been working with the structured data so the relational <coughs> sorry excuse me the relational database is good at handling structured data so that is what we have been using right so they are very good at handling structured data so and what about the unstructured data right so it's quite the opposite of structured data so in case of unstructured data so the data elements that we store right so they do not have any common structure right so let's say i have a folder on my uh, machine right so which comprises of some data it has got one uh, it has got some few documents few images right so and few charts right so few presentations a few spreadsheets right few music files and all now this all data if you put can you can you put it into a common structure in a database no, no we cannot right mm. so these are uh, the, each each uh, 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 right so they don't share any combo hello no hello hello yeah i i just lost your voice you can you hear me yeah yeah let me i can hear you uh, okay yeah yeah your voice yeah, got cut right. okay okay <clears throat> right right so uh, i was talking about unstructured data right so unstructured data cannot be easily stored it is difficult to store and manage and process as well right so mm -hmm. storing unstructured data in a relational database management it can be stored right it's in the format of binary objects right so blob and all right it can be stored but we rarely do that right so we we never store huge volume of data because our database management systems are not good at uh, handling unstructured data right 
that's what uh, the problem with uh, RDBM system. This is not a fault. They are not designed for that, right? So when you say that Hadoop, when, when you say a Hadoop, right? So Hadoop, is, Hadoop and big data is not a replacement for traditional database. We'll, we'll cover that. Right, it's not a replacement right. for that. So, so this is it's a different technology designed to Hadoop is a different technology designed to address different set of problems, not that of uh, RDBMS systems. Right. right. <clears throat> and then next is semi-structured data. Semi-structured data is something so which is a combination of both structured and unstructured. Right. So, wherein uh, the best example for such type of data is uh, XML or JSON content. Right. So, wherein uh, the schema is optional. Right. So if you want, uh, uh, if you want, you can associate a schema with that and try to interpret it. So if not, uh, you, you, you need not have it, right? So that is uh, unstructured data. Sorry, that is, uh, that was uh, semi-structured data. So this talks about the variety of data, right? So now that we have mentioned volume, variety, and uh, volume and variety, right? So now let's look into velocity as well. Right, so what is velocity? So velocity de defines the rate at which the data is increasing, right? So what what this has to do with the uh, 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 database management is so this is also a key factor, right? So why? Because so this comes into uh, this comes into play uh, uh, in managing your uh, uh, infrastructure, right? So the way uh, in which you deal uh, the way how you deal the data for, let's say for example uh, <clears throat> we started off a company right so we initially we started off with a database right which has got all products and all this in, products information and all so maybe let's say uh, it's uh, one uh, and, uh, initially the database size is one gigabyte we started it uh, with one gigabyte. as our uh, as our organization grows right so mm -hmm. our database size will also grow it will expand so one one uh, one gigabyte has become 10 gigabytes right so mm -hmm. 10 gigabytes will become in a matter of few months, 10 gigabytes will become 20 gigabytes. How do you cope up with that scale? How do you scale your infrastructure and how do you scale your applications, right? So you cannot easily, you you, you have to plan for that in advance, right? So you, yeah. you, you should have a vision for that. Right? So when you are setting up a system or designing a system, you cannot just uh, simply design, right? right? So uh, for one, uh, for handling, uh, let us say one, uh, one gigabyte of data, Right, so one or maybe four or five gigabytes of data. You cannot just you know, set up a system with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, from 10, 10, 15 gig gigs of memory and uh, uh, two cores CPUs and some resources, some disks. Right. So let's say one uh, one terabyte disk. So what happens when your database exceeds that range? Right. So you will you'll, you'll have to scale your infrastructure as well. Right. So. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll have to raise your infrastructure and you'll have to scale your applications as well. Right? So to how much you can scale, to what extent can you scale is the question. You cannot indefinitely scale, right? Let's say your database is growing, growing uh, every day, right? So you cannot indefinitely scale, right? So there will be a limit at, uh, at which you cannot uh, scale beyond that point, right? So how do you plan for this such kind of things? So velocity. So velocity talks about that factor. So the rate at which data is growing, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, so these are called uh, three V's of big data, volume, velocity, and variety, right? So any big data technology, right? So should be capable of addressing all these three factors very in, uh, efficiently in an efficient fashion, right? Mm -hmm. And Hadoop is one such technology. Hadoop is the technology so that addresses all these three problems in an effective manner. Right? So that is mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, is it clear, uh, Gayatri? So yes. all, what is, what, what is uh, so basically, uh, what my intention is, is uh, when you understand the problem statement very clearly, Right, mm -hmm. so it would be evident. Uh, it would be easy for you to understand the solution as well. Right, so once right. the problem is clear, right, so the solution is easy to implement. Right. Yes. Right. So now let's look into some of the uh, facts. Right. So see mm -hmm. how uh, what are the volumes of data. Right. So if you look at Facebook, right, so Facebook produces about ten terabytes of data every day. This was mm -hmm. some two years back, right? So this figure might have gone up, right? So right, we are right. looking at our old statistics, right? And also the New York Stock Exchange generates about 
one terabyte of new trade data per day. So the trade uh, transactions, whatever are happening, happening right out there, uh, stocks, selling mm -hmm. and buying and stock exchange. All the data is uh, uh, amounts to one terabyte of new trade data per day. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Right. So the next is how much data is present in the world as on today, not as on today, as on uh, two years back. Some guy <laughs> estimated uh, it to be around uh, uh, two zettabytes of data is present in the entire world. So this is an, uh, just an approximation. Nobody can really accurately calculate the entire volume of data present in the entire world, right? So which is right. virtually impossible, right? So now that these three figure, three statements, first you you might have understood uh, how large the volumes of data is, at what rate the data volumes are growing, right? So mm -hmm. now, so how do you manage all this data? That is the first question, right? So forget about processing. So in order to process something, you need to first store it something, right? So storage is the first piece, right? So how do you store? So I'm giving when Facebook is receiving 10 terabytes of data, new data every day, right? So how do how does Facebook store that? How does any organization store uh, such huge volumes of data? Can it be stored in a relational database management system, traditional RDBMS system? I believe no. they are not capable of uh, doing so. Even if they are capable, they might be very uh, <laughs> poor at doing so. Right, so they might not be efficient. It might not be an efficient way of doing. So let's see why it is the case. So if you look at the disk transfer rate, right? So if you take about any average uh, disk, right? Average consumer disk or uh, or maybe some enterprise disk or whatever it is, right? Uh, the average data transfer uh, rate of a disk would be around 100 megabytes per second. So that is what uh, the speed of disks is, right? So if, mm -hmm. at this speed, so if you want to read one terabyte of data, how much time it will it take? It will take two hundred, uh, two and a half hours to read. So basically, that is if you are trying to read one terabyte of data from a hard disk, which has an average transfer speed of uh, average read speed of hundred megabytes per second. So it will take one terabyte of data. So how, what does that mean to us? So now let's say we have a database of one terabyte, right? Right, so mm -hmm. we have a database of one terabyte. Now I want to query some data against this database, right? So how much time uh, does my query take to respond back with a result set? That is a question. How much time will it take? Ideally, so yeah. it has to scan all, all this one terabyte of data, right? Yeah. Just to read yeah. that one terabyte of data is to taking two and a half hours and on mm -hmm. top of that processing, right? So yes. uh, it should be taking at least two and a half hours to return a return, uh, return a result set for our query. So which is very very uh, uh, I mean the two and a half hours is a very uh, long period. So we cannot afford to wait for such long duration, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally, this is, ideally uh, databases usually don't take that much time. So this is just for a theoretical discussion, why? Right? Because so there are various other techniques employed on a databases, right? So mm -hmm. you have indexes, partitions, right? So you have uh, clustered environments, right? So load balances and all sorts of things to cut this down, right? But still, you can understand, right? So for one terabyte of data, well, what if we put this into picture on a hundred terabytes or twenty, hundred or two hundred terabytes, right? So it usually takes a long, uh, I mean, uh, a long duration. For that to process right so we, which we cannot afford to such uh, to uh, for our queries to take uh, that much time to respond so we have to cut this down so traditional database uh, database management systems right so they are not very good at handling such large volumes of data so this is uh, where Hadoop comes uh, comes into play and uh, tries to rescue uh, tries to rescue us right. so 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 what is the solution for it? So now that we have understood the problem statement, got the uh, got the problem right. So we, it is difficult to store uh, 
uh, 10 terabytes of data every day, right? So where do you store 10 terabytes of data? You don't even have disks that, uh, that, uh, that have the capacity of 10 terabytes. Maybe you get a disk with four or five terabytes, six terabytes max, right? So how do you store such large volumes of data? So that is what. So what is the solution to it? Do you have any solution? Or can you suggest any solution for this? We are to distribute the data. Sorry? We are to distribute the data. Yes, exactly. I yeah. got the term out of you, right? So distribute mm -hmm. the data, right? So mm -hmm. distribute all the data that you want to store. So we'll have to follow a distributed approach. So when one person, one, one system is not capable of uh, handling it, so divide it and distribute it to several systems. So to follow a distributed approach. So that is what exactly is. So I'll show you the statement, right? So this is a statement given by a lady called Grasshopper. So is a, she's a pro, she's a programmer, right? So she, she says that in your pioneer days, so they used oxen for heavy pulling, right? And when one ox couldn't budge a, a log, so they didn't try to grow a larger ox, right? So, so they added more oxen to the cart. Right, so rather than growing the ox bigger, right? So similar way, so we shouldn't be trying for bigger computers, right? So uh, we we should try definitely, but uh, we cannot indefinitely do that. As I said in my earlier talk, right? So uh, we cannot scale our infrastructure uh, indefinitely, right? So let's say, what do you mean by scaling? Is let's say I have a machine now with uh, uh, 10 gig, uh, 10 gigs of memory, right? So tomorrow I can scale you, uh, I can add a few more memory, right? So from 8 to 16 gigabytes and from 16 to 32 gigabytes, 32 to uh, 100, right? So I'm I'm growing that, but there will be a limit, right? So beyond which I cannot put more memory into a system, right? So there is a limit to that. So, so that is what uh, uh, is, so we'll max out at some stage. So you know, what, what would we do in that case? In that case is, so we add one more system. So we are, we have a new computer, right? So we have, we will have one more computer and uh, put some memory and uh, disks and IO CPU into that. And then, so we'll, uh, we'll form a cluster. So, so that both are working closely together. That is what it is, right? So, uh, so we should be achieving that in a similar fashion, right? So now the for the solution is distributed approach. That is what we have come up with, right? So let's see mm -hmm. what is Hadoop. So Hadoop is a open source distributed framework, right? So Hadoop is an open source framework, so which allows us to store and process big data in a distributed environment, right? So we are we are now understood all the terms, right? So open source, forget about it. So it is a free open source software. Right. It's a framework that allows us to store, right? So we using Hadoop, you can store large volumes of data and also process, not only storing, we can also process the stored data, right? In a distributed environment, right? So wherein uh, you have multiple machines acting as a cluster, right? So is a open source framework, which allows us to process big data in a distributed environment across clusters of computers. So those are all the members. We call it, we call it as uh, nodes, basically in case of a Hadoop cluster. So using a simple programming model, which is called MapReduce. Yes, we'll get introduced that uh, MapReduce later, right? So mm -hmm. Hadoop uses a simple programming model called MapReduce for processing the uh, data that is stored in Hadoop. Right, so it is designed to Hadoop is designed to scale up from single nodes to thousands of machines. It is easily scalable. So if you if you want to scale your infrastructure, it is very easy. If you if you want to, if you need a more storage and a, a more processing power, just add a few more nodes to the cluster. That's it. So it is very easy to do so. We'll see uh, once we understand the architecture of HDFS, right? So it will be evident how how easy it is to. Uh, scale our infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? So each node or each uh, each system within this distributed uh, uh, frame, uh, distributed cluster, right, will offer local computation and storage. So each machine, each node within the cluster will have its own <coughs> own storage and own computational power. Let's say, don't worry much too much about this uh, definition. So for the sake of completeness, I have put it here. It's, it's okay. So if you get only a few pieces out of it, so, uh, things get more clearer as we uh, as we go deeper into uh, the concepts, right? 
So oh. if you look at the history of Hadoop, so Hadoop started off as a project by uh, a guy named uh, Duff Cutting, right? So in the year 2005, right? So during that time, so uh, Duff Cutting was working with Yahoo. So yeah, so Yahoo became a primary contributor for this project in the year 2006. So during that period, Yahoo scaled its cluster from 20 nodes to 4,000 plus nodes. Right? And uh, coming to the features, uh, Hadoop is very portable. Since uh, it is uh, written in Java, Hadoop is developed in Java, right? So it acquires all the features of Java, so which is portable, wherein portability is one of them, right? So it can run on a, a commodity hardware. It does not need any uh, enterprise grade hardware, specialized hardware to run Hadoop. That doesn't mean that so you cannot run Hadoop on uh, enterprise grade hardware. You can definitely run, but it does not need, it, uh, it doesn't need that. Right. So you can run this on a commodity hardware, just like uh, your traditional database management system, right? So uh, you you need to have a specialized hardware for that to run. If, if you are uh, working with any database like uh, Oracle or some other uh, databases, right? So you don't have enough uh, capacity, storage capacity to support that particular system, right? So, so you'd be using uh, uh, network storage devices or uh, a storage uh, networks, SANS, right? So to do that. So these are all the specialized infrastructure, specialized hardware required for that. So in case of Hadoop, we don't need that, right? So even uh, if we have, we can run it, right? So it doesn't uh, stop you from running, right? So, but ideally not required. And also the platforms on which Hadoop can run is uh, virtually on, uh, it runs on uh, any platform, any, any operating system wherein uh, you have support for Java. So if you can run Java on any given operating system, so you can definitely run Hadoop over there, right? So people are uh, running uh, Hadoop clusters even on micro devices, right? So like uh, things like uh, Raspberry Pi or some other small, small factor devices as well, right? And largest Hadoop cluster, the largest publicly known Hadoop clusters are at Yahoo's 4000 node cluster followed by Facebook's 2300 node cluster. Right? So these are some facts. I mean, they might no longer be true now, right? So anyways, I'm not concerned about that. Right. So now let's look into Hadoop history. Right, so the milestones in Hadoop's journey, right? So in December 2004, so Google published a paper called GFS, right? So it all started with this paper. So what the GF, what is GFS is? GFS stands for a, a Google File System, right? So now that you are, now that we are all using the Google Drive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, back in back in 2004, right? So Google Drive was not there. So if you remember, right? So mm -hmm. Google Drive was introduced after this, uh, after 2004, somewhere in 2005 or uh, 2006, uh, 2006, I guess. I don't know exactly. So what Go what Google wanted to do was, was it wanted to offer this uh, Google Drive as a service, right? So basically, it wanted to give some storage space to uh, all each of its uh, users. So, uh, but now every user who signs up for Gmail gets 15 GB of storage, right? So imagine. 15 GB per user. How many Gmail users are there? So where where is Google storing all of it, all this data? It has to store uh, in a uh, somewhere, right? So it has to store efficiently. So let's say I have a I have an account on Google Drive, right? So I store all my contents. It should not be visible to some other user, right? So they should be separated, right? So I can share the things on, uh, only things that are shared needs to be shared. Not, not all the things, right? So there should be uh, privacy, there should be partitions, right? So the kind of thing. So all this infrastructure, how, how, how Google has made it. So for this purpose, right? So Google wanted to de design a file system of its own. So to support all this uh, uh, infrastructure, right? So for this, it has published a paper called GFS, which talks about uh, the distributed storage where, wherein uh, HDFS is based on. Right, so it talks about distributed uh, storage and distributed processing and all. Right, and then so in the year 2005, so there was a project called Nudge, which uses the MapReduce technique. So by the way, Nudge is a project. It is a project, a open source project, uh, 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 which is uh, which is built for uh, uh, text uh, text indexing and searching. Right, so it's kind of an open source uh, search engine project. 
right for example if you take google right so google.com right so the search engine google is a, a proprietary one right so you do not you can use google services for free but uh, not the uh, source and all right so uh, nudge was a project uh, 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 to create an open source uh, uh, project of it right so in the year in the year 2006 uh, 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 this one hadoop becomes lucene sub project so Lucina is also an another project, open source project, so which is used for information retrieval system, right? So when you have a large textual content, right? So if you want to process all these data, right? Uh, all the textual content, so the, it was difficult to do that. So uh, Lucene uh, addresses that uh, effectively, right? And in the year 2007, so Yahoo set up its uh, 1000 node cluster and followed by uh, uh, followed by Facebook's 4,000 node test cluster in 2008 of July, right? And uh, in 2000, in the year uh, 2008, uh, Hadoop, became an, uh, Hadoop became Apache's top level project. So by the way, Apache is a software foundation. Uh, it's a community driven, um, uh, community driven organization wherein they maintain and manage open source projects. Like you might have heard various projects is Apache Web Server, Apache Tomcat, all right, so uh, Apache Active MQ, right? So all the uh, it maintains all the free and open source projects, right? So uh, how do became a top level project in uh, Apache, right? And uh, in the year 2008, right, so September, right? So Hive becomes Hadoop sub project. Hive is a different uh, project altogether, right? So now also it's a different project, but it becomes a sub project of uh, Hive in uh, uh, in the year 2008. Right. So these are some of the milestones in uh, Hadoop's journey. Right. So it's just uh, we, mm -hmm. we don't have to do really do anything with this. Right. So just uh, just uh, just for the sake of uh, knowledge. So we have just covered it. Right. Mm -hmm. So now let's look into some of the features of Hadoop, or maybe we, to be more specific, uh, some differences between RDBMS and uh, uh, Hadoop. Right. So we are all. Uh, I mean, I believe you, so. You are comfortable with uh, uh, RDBMS system since you have worked with them for uh, quite a long period. Right. So you should be knowing what is an RDBMS RDBMS system and what are its features, what it is, yeah. what it's capable. Of, right. Mm -hmm. So now right. let's try to put some light on uh, the differences between RDBMS and Hadoop. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Here, here are some uh, key uh, key differences that we have listed. This is not a comprehensive list, right? So we're not going in great detail, but uh, okay. we'll give an overview of, uh, of uh, what it is, right? Okay. So, so RDBMS system, right? So uh, is schema on write. So whereas Hadoop systems are are uh, batch batch processing systems, which are uh, uh, schema on read. So what does that mean? Schema on read and schema on write. So let's say, so now let's say you want to populate some data in your relational database management system, right? So you want to insert some data into uh, your RDBMS system. So what is that first thing that you do? You cannot straight away insert data. So there are some uh, prerequisite steps that needs to be done to some preparation that needs to be done in order to put data into RDBMS. What, what's that? You create a you table. To, a yes, exactly. You need to create a schema, right? So you need to create okay. a table. Right. Yeah, so the, yeah. per, the the process of creating a table is nothing but you are defining a schema. So what you are basically you are telling the RDBMS system that I am going to store uh, some data, right? So which is which has this structure, right? Okay. Basically you are defining schema, right? So the schema should or should, should be present well in advance before storing the data into your system, right? So that is schema on write. So every time you insert a data into a record into your table. So the schema will be matched against what you have defined, right? So okay. you have to, uh, right? So it will check for all these constraints and the uh, schema. If this uh, the record the record that is being inserted, right? So it does not adhere to the schema what you have defined in your DDL statement. So it will straight away reject. It will throw that yeah. cannot insert, right? So yeah. it fails. Schema validation has failed. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is what. So whereas in case of Hadoop, so it is not like that. So it is uh, quite a different way. So you don't have any schema. Of course, you can have it, right? Which is totally an optional, right? So schema, you don't need when you are inserting data. If, when you are inserting, you can put anything, whatever you want, 
right okay. so only schema is applied or uh, interpreted so when you read the data okay. this might be this is, this might sound some confusing how can you insert some data uh, when you have uh, no schema associated with that so, right? so if you are coming from a uh, i mean uh, rdbms background so so it would be difficult to think right so right. don't worry so we have to change our perspective when we are uh, when, when you are working with hadoop right so hadoop is not just like uh, is not a replacement for rdbms system let's say its uh, behavior is also different the way in which it works is also different right so uh, mm -hmm. uh, you might have to change your perspective uh, on Hadoop, right? So with respect to Hadoop, so don't worry. This will take some time. So once you are comfortable with this, right? So you you'll get mm -hmm. used to. Initially, it might be uh, confusing or it might look weird. So now, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, let me try to complete this. I have just typed out one statement. What, uh, what is that? Can you read it, read it for me? What is that? This is number one. Mm -hmm. I never said you that it was number one. It was a number, right? <laughs> right? Right. So that is what, right? So database management systems, right? So they define, we define. So it is an integer, right? So we, when you are storing, when you are defining a column, right? So you define the type and then the precision also, right? right? So what right. range does this fall in? Whereas in case of Hadoop, so we don't do that. So we just store it. It is just a plain text, not even text. It is a binary content. If, to be more right. specific, so I have never said it is a num whether it is a what I have written is a number or a digit or a, a, a symbol or a character or a string or a uh, or a piece of text or whatever it is. I have not defined the schema. Right? As as long as I don't define a schema, so you cannot interpret it. I just store it there. It is up yeah. to you how you interpret. It. If you are reading it as a number, so you are interpreting it as a number. I am interpreting it as a character. Right, somebody else is right. interpreting as a digit. Right, it is right. all about how you perceive things. So that is what the schema is applied when you are reading data out of it. Right. Right. Okay. So the okay. application assumes the schema. That is what. Right. So next is interactive and batch processing. Right. So RDBMS systems are designed for interactive processing, whereas Hadoop uh, is a batch processing system so you might be knowing what is an interactive processing and batch processing system so but uh, again let me make clear that clear mm -hmm. right so interactive processing systems are one so which are designed to handle uh, 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 real time interactive transactions that is uh, basically for example if you have a, a business applications wherein to perform uh, transactions right so the individual mm -hmm. transactions the regular uh, uh, business transactions so let's say for example a banking application right mm -hmm. let's say in a banking application the users are uh, withdraw users are performing various transactions uh, transferring money withdrawing money depositing right so those are individual transactions that are uh, happening multiple transactions so so let's say when i when i transact with a uh, system banking system what i'm doing so i'm inserting my card and punching in some number account number or whatever it is and withdrawing some money so how uh, behind the scenes right so the amount has to be deducted from a from a uh, my bank account so that is what basically updating a row in a uh, uh, in a database so how many record uh, records do you think get affected there only a few right only mm -hmm. a bunch of them only mm -hmm. only one or two records which are related to me get uh, get affected so that is what interactive processing is right mm -hmm. so i'm not dealing with all the entire uh, entire records in that particular table no so i'm only interested in specific records i'm reading specific records i'm updating specific records mm -hmm. so whereas in case of batch processing that is not the case in case of batch processing you might be dealing with multiple uh, data uh, I, I mean you might be dealing with all the data in the table at once let's say uh, for example batch processing like uh, let's say you want to analyze uh, the uh, uh, the uh, profit of uh, the profits earned or uh, you want to uh, have you want to analyze the total sales for a particular product in in, in the uh, entire region or maybe throughout your organization let's say uh, you want to perform the you want to know the sales of a particular product or maybe all products together you want to know the entire sales of your organization right what do you do so you in this case you're not dealing with one one individual record 
so you have to access all the records and sum it up right so it's a batch processing you are processing all the records mm -hmm. not if not all most of the records based on the your criteria what you are uh, uh, doing right so that is what batch processing is so hadoop system is designed for batch processing whereas rdbms systems are not uh, designed for batch processing that doesn't mean that so they are uh, your uh, uh, batch processing is not possible in case of rdbms system yeah no right so you can still uh, perform batch operations on rdbms we have done that right so we are doing some of uh, select some of salary from our employees right? so it's a batch batch processing right so you are processing yeah. all the records mm -hmm. right so yeah. You can still do that. You can do. Uh, it's not about uh, whether it can be done or not. It's it's doable. But thing is, it is not designed for that. So it is not uh, efficient to do that. Have you ever uh, ha had a chance to run select star from uh, <laughs> a particular table on uh, your table in your database? No, you you will never no. do that, right? No, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, huh? So your uh, RDBMS system will suffocate to death, right? If you right. do that. Yes. Right? It's not designed for that. It is still doable, right? So you'll you'll encounter performance issues. You'll have some various other things to uh, other things that you uh, should take into account. It's still doable, but it's not designed for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Hadoop is, is exclusively designed for batch processing. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Next thing is. Uh, the type of data that we have already covered structured and unstructured semi structured right so rdbms systems are designed for processing structured content right so they are very good at handling structured data but very poor at handling unstructured kind of literally they cannot handle unstructured data apart from storing they uh, you cannot really do any processing on that right so whereas hadoop right. system is designed for handling unstructured content as well Right, so you can handle unstructured contents, semi-structured, even even structured data as well. Right, mm. and RDBMS system is an OLTP-based system, and whereas Hadoop system is an OLAP-based system. Right, so uh, so we might have already learned about uh, uh, OLTP and OLAP-based yes. systems. Right, yes. just to yes. put a, uh, just to have some uh, overview kind of thing. So I have put it a few some put up some few points here so let's okay. see some differences between OLTP system and OLAP based systems right so the first uh, factor is latency right so latency is something uh, when you try to access a, a, a system so uh, what is the time taken for it to respond right so how much time does it take to respond back that is what latency is so in case of OLTP systems <coughs> the latency is very low right to the order of milliseconds so in case mm -hmm. of OLAP based systems and uh, analytical processing that is batch processing system so you cannot ha expect to have very low latency here we are good with uh, very high latency as well so the latency will be usually in the order of minutes and uh, in some cases to the uh, even in the order of uh, hours and days as well depending upon the uh, uh, data set the volume of data set that you are handling right, right. Mm -hmm. so so this is what so latency is very very less and in case of concurrency so let's see how how concurrency is right? So in case of OLTP systems we need to have very high concurrency the system should be capable of supporting very concurrent transactions high concurrent transactions for example if you take a banking system right so all users are performing transactions there are thousands millions of users performing transactions at a at any given point of time so the system should be capable enough to handle all that uh, all that uh, thousands and millions of transactions successfully right so they are mm -hmm. designed for uh, designed for handling concurrency right so uh, whereas in case of OLAP based systems so you need not have a very high concurrency right? because so you never uh, I mean uh, let's say for example to analyze all the profit of sales or maybe uh, I want to know how much uh, how many accounts have been opened in a given year or a given region who runs those queries not everybody runs that right only maybe ba bank manager or maybe some other officials do that so which are very limited in number so we don't need a very high concurrency there right so, right. so concurrency is very uh, low in case of OLAP based systems and then the access patterns so coming to access patterns so the RDBMS system should be capable of supporting both read and write operations Right, this word so when I open a new account or maybe a new account so a new record has to be inserted into a database table 
right? And when I access it, uh, data has to be retrieved from that particular table, right? So and maybe may, if I update something, so it has to be updated. Both read and write operations are uh, sh uh, should be permitted by the system. Whereas in case of batch processing, that is OLAP based systems, so we have only read uh, uh, read access. The read 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 pattern is the only one which is widely used. You don't need for, you, you don't need to have a, a right a right access pattern. Why? Because you don't really update. So let's say you have a large data set wherein you want to analyze it. You don't update it. There is no need. So you're not updating specific records. Got the point? So you're just reading. So let's say you have a large volume of data, uh, data set. Uh, so what you'd be, what you, your interest would be to get the metrics out of it, get the analytics out of it. So you want to read the data and analyze it and then uh, obtain some um, facts out of it. So you, your interest is not to update its data set. So OLAP based systems are all uh, read based, more, right? Mostly read based. So you don't have a, an option to, up, uh, to write. Don't think this as a uh, disadvantage. It's not required here. So we don't need it mm. in case of OLAP based systems, right? Yeah. Right. So next in case of uh, queries. So the queries in case of uh, OLTP systems are very selective. Whereas in OLAP based systems, they, they are not uns uh, they are not uh, selective. They, it could be anything. So what uh, what what do you mean by the selectiveness here in case of OLTPs? So here, so when a user is interacting with a database application, right? So he is not directly interacting. Let's say I I go to the ATM, right? And I cannot directly access the bank uh, bank's uh, database, right? So that is a system user interface or whatever it is, which is abstracting me. Right, so I have to interact with the user interface or uh, GUI that is provided. So the GUI will will uh, will uh, generate uh, uh, SQL statements for me, and then it will run it against your uh, database. So uh, the user interface will abstract me from directly interacting with the database. So it will restrict the queries. I cannot uh, uh, perform uh, the, the delete statements. Right, so the, my queries will be very selective, very limited. I can only access what the GUI permits, right? The user right. interface permits. So in case of OLAP-based systems, it's not like this. You don't usually don't have any user interface, so the queries are unselected. It could be anything. So get me the sales for uh, uh, for this product uh, for this uh, product across these regions. Get me the sales of all the accounts that have been opened uh, during uh, uh, the demontation period. Who have been uh, uh, get me all the account details, or maybe get me the salary. Who uh, get me all the account uh, uh, details, wherein the uh, number of transactions, so on. So get me all the account details, or, or it could the queries could be anything, right? So we we don't have we cannot predict the queries. They are very unselective, right? Mm -hmm. And then the data scope, right? So see, OLTP based systems are used for. Uh, uh, operational purposes, whereas uh, OLAP based systems are used for uh, retrospective, that is to bring the analytics out of it, right? So to get some uh, uh, analytics out of the data, right? So what do you mean by operational purposes is, here is to, uh, these systems are used by, for performing day-to-day -day business transactions. So they are not used for batch processing, right? So day-to-day -day business uh, transactions are ha handled by the OLTP based systems. And the end users in case of the OLTP based systems is the, usually the uh, customers. First, so the customers uh, interact with the OLTP based system through a mostly through a GUI, uh, mostly through a user interface, so some mm -hmm. sort of user interface. So whereas in case of OLAP based systems, so the end users are uh, data scientists who directly work with the data and analyze the data sets and bring some uh, uh, useful uh, metrics out of the data. And the technologies that are uh, used in case of OLTP based systems are SQL and NoSQL, right? So, and in case of OLAP based systems, so you, we use technologies like MapReduce, so which we'd be covering uh, uh, here in Hadoop and massive parallel processing, right? So you, you need to follow the approach, a different uh, approach altogether for processing that large data sets. So we'll see, we'll see in detail when we, uh, get introduced to MapReduce. So, what is the uh, what is the approach of MapReduce and all, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so, here in the bottom, so we have a Hadoop small Hadoop cluster being shown here. So, it's all called uh, a Hadoop cluster, and he here you have various nodes 
all working uh, uh, together to form a Hadoop cluster. There are two components, HDFS and MapReduce. So we'll see about uh, these components in the upcoming sessions. Right. And uh, coming to the uh, features of Hadoop, right? So here are some of them, right? So distributed storage. So you can distribute the data and uh, store it in, an, in a Hadoop cluster. So, so now let's say you want to store uh, 10 gigabytes of data, 10 terabytes of data, maybe let's say. So now what I do is so I distribute the data. So each node within this cluster will store one terabyte of data. This will store one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte. Right? So together they are collectively storing 100 terabytes of data. Yeah, if it were to, if uh, if we were to store all the 100 terabytes of data on one system, we, we couldn't do that because of uh, issues, uh, hardware issues, or we don't have a sufficient infrastructure to do that. So now what we do is we'll split that. So that is what distributed storage is. So we'll distribute the data, we'll divide the data that needs to be stored into chunks. How we divide and all, we'll discuss in HDFS. Right? We'll divide it into parts and uh, uh, store each each part or each piece onto one system. Okay? So that is what mm -hmm. distributed storage is. And again is distributed processing. So uh, rather than processing all the data at once, right? So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll tell each an individual system to process the data individually. So thereby so achieving distributed processing so thereby we can uh, efficiently and uh, uh, process the data set at a faster rate right so mm -hmm. it, uh, so and next is scalability so uh, Hadoop clusters are easily scalable now let's say you want to add few more no uh, you want to extend the capacity of the cluster right so add few more nodes to the cluster that's it done so your uh, infrastructure your Hadoop cluster is can be easily scaled it can easily be scaled so no, nothing much effort is required in doing so and it is flexible to work with uh, your uh, 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 Hadoop clusters and also Hadoop clusters are designed for high fault tolerance right so what if one no, node goes down so when you are when you are storing the data in a distributed fashion so there is a possibility of losing one node right so if, if one node is dead so you'd be losing you'd be at a risk of losing data that has been stored on that particular node so how do you deal with that right so that is what fault tolerance addresses right so we'll look into that uh, when we discuss about hdfs and um, performance so uh, hdfs cluster yield uh, clusters yield a very high they perform very good performance based again it all depends on the uh, topologies or be, be based on the uh, topology or based on the configuration what we have set up right and then so Hadoop clusters are also capable of having a rack awareness functionality so using which uh, we can define uh, we, you can efficiently uh, you can design a Hadoop cluster in a multi in a uh, in a multi node uh, environment in case of uh, multiple data centers and all, right? So this is uh, one good feature of uh, Hadoop, right? So and uh, coming to the training layout, so I have already covered the course content, right? So walk you through the topics. So this would be our layout on a very high level overview. So we'll talk about the Hadoop technology stack. So we'll talk about all the various components within the Hadoop ecosystem, and then so we'll uh, uh, we. We'll We'll get started with HDFS and we'll install and configure a Hadoop cluster of our own. And then so we'll uh, look into MapReduce. So we'll get introduced ourselves to MapReduce and we'll write some MapReduce programs. And then uh, and then we'll work with each of these tools listed here. So we'll start off with each each tool. We'll start off with PIG and uh, uh, continue to uh, cover each of these tools, right? And then uh, we'll look into some troubleshooting techniques uh, accordingly, right? So I just uh, covered that in the course uh, content and all, and Hadoop on the cloud. So this is the same as the last one, right? So we'll say instead of running it on the cloud, so we'll set up a local virtual machine uh, of uh, any of the distribution, whatever it is, and I'll try to walk you through that. So this is a, a training layout at a very high level overview, and this would be our uh, environment setup, most probably, right? So we can tweak it, right? So based on uh, resources available to us, right? So we'll have a three node, uh, four node uh, cluster. So wherein you have three data nodes, 
methods data node 1 data node 2 data node 3 and one master node called uh, name node right? so this would be uh, our ideal setup we'll try to uh, have this setup but uh, we'll see how it goes based on our resources available to us right and, <coughs> and then and then uh, <clears throat> this would be running on Ubuntu, right? So you can choose any operating system. We are not restricted to Ubuntu, right? So I have chosen it because of its ease, right? So easy to set up and all. So we'll uh, we'll install VirtualBox or any uh, any hypervisor on our system. You could use any hypervisor, VirtualBox, VMware, or Hyper-V. It doesn't matter, right? And uh, we'll set up. We'll install uh, Linux in that, and then will set up our Hadoop clusters. By the way, we'd be using Hadoop versions uh, 1.2.x, which would be running on uh, Java 1.7. We'll also look into that, how to install Java and how to set it up. Don't worry. So we'll mm -hmm. uh, we'll do it from scratch, right? So there's nothing uh, pre-installed and all. So we'll, we'll okay. do it from scratch. On, so that would not be a problem to us. And finally, do you have uh, any questions, Gayatri? Uh... So the, the, the more than questions, I just wanted to say the I, my background is more of a like data person. So I'm not uh, I don't know Java, so I'm not sure if that is a problem. Mm -hmm. So the, I know like I've done programming before, like when I started my career, but uh, Java is not something which I do. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is one thing which I want to do uh, and I'm more interested in so because I'm an ETL developer uh, uh, like and like I do data analysis I do uh, data development SQL so I'm I so I want to use so I want to focus or use those skills and apply it to big data in my yeah, future sure. roles future roles so so I'm interested in the the ETL component how is that taken care of in the big data framework? So how is data, how do we ingest data? How do we transform data? And how do we exactly. move the data? Like exactly. with, that, with that as a focus, yeah. Okay, so so that all will get covered throughout our course. There's uh, yes. nothing okay. to worry. So these are the concepts what we, you might have seen, right? So the course content yes. gets yes. that yes. covered. So yes. we'll see that, so that would not be a problem. So okay. this uh, this the first one, uh, question about Java. So that is a common question that I receive, right? <laughs> okay. So there's nothing to worry, right? So okay. uh, people say that, so we are not comfortable with Java. So can we proceed uh, with uh, learning Hadoop and all, right? So that's right. what. So let me yes. tell you one thing, right? So thing now, so if you want a short answer, the short answer now is, so you don't need Java to learn how to. Okay, that's okay, the short answer, okay, right? Okay. So <laughs> okay. Uh, if you are, if you know Java, so that would be well and good, right? So right. Now, now we don't know. Uh, we don't uh, need that. So why? Because see, if you look at here, mm -hmm. right? So till here it is Hadoop, right? So after this, yes. Hadoop ends here, right? So if you want to just uh, learn Hadoop, this okay. is up to just only nine, okay. class nine or chapter nine. He, right, Hadoop right. ends here. We are done with Hadoop. Okay. Right. Uh, so these okay. are the additional tools. The additional tools within the Hadoop ecosystem. Pig. Right. Pig is some right. different tool. So uh, in the beginning days of Hadoop, in the early days of Hadoop, right? So these tools were not there. Pig was not there. High uh, was not there. School was not there. Any right. any any action that you need to accomplish, right? So should have right. been. Uh, by using by writing a map reduce program right okay right by mm -hmm. writing a map reduce program right so these tools were not there so in that in that case right so during that point of time so you are required to have uh, a knowledge yeah. uh, sound knowledge on programming right so especially right, right. in case of java to develop map reduce and program to develop the map reduce programs right so any right. task be it, let's let's say you want to populate some data into your Hadoop cluster. You want to retrieve some data from your Hadoop cluster. You want to uh, process some data. For any given action, you need to write a Java MapReduce program in the beginning days of Hadoop. Okay. Okay. This is not the case now. No. Okay. Right. So things right. have changed dramatically. Right. So. Okay. Uh, Many tools. There are thousands of tools within the uh, not uh, not thousands, uh, uh, at least hundreds of tools mm -hmm. in the Hadoop ecosystem that mm -hmm. uh, we can make use of. Now you want to populate some data into Hadoop, right? So you don't need to write a very complex MapReduce program. So there is a tool for to to do that. 
called yeah. scoop scoop will do that so just tell scoop that uh, put this data into uh, hadoop cluster it will do that for you correct correct okay okay got so it it is not uh, it is not bypassing right. map reduce so the scoop no. is taking care of all that map reduce uh, low level functionality it is it is, uh, it is working for you correct you are okay. just giving some statements to scoop that is what okay. pig okay. so you are giving some small one line or two line statements to pig or hive basically okay right so pig or hive will convert that one line one liner or two liner statements to a complex map reduce job and it will run on the cluster map reduce is not gone it is there but only thing is we are not directly interacting with that so we right. now we now have several set of tools to work to to do our tasks right okay so that's okay. the case that's, that's just case. like a, okay Hello? it's very yes. easy nowadays to work with hadoop so you are not yes. required to have yeah okay. so here uh, yeah so here in this session so there is one session uh, right so session 4 introduction to map not introduction uh, yeah map reduce session so session 9 so here is a session in which uh, wherein we write a, a actual map reduce job in java right so we'll explore it so don't worry so even if you don't get it also not a problem just try to understand uh, uh, what is happening there right so okay. you, you might not write a you might not you might not be required to write a program just try to see what what are the things how it is going there it's just like watching watching a movie of a different language that we don't understand e right. even though we don't understand we, we watch it so it's uh, right. we, we get something out of it right so right. Even, right. even though we don't understand so that right. would not be a problem java so right. so so shouldn't be a problem to us okay. and coming to the other uh, skills right so if you are comfortable with uh, with the uh, sql concept right so basically right. we don't need any advanced uh, uh, knowledge on sql also that is the pl okay. sql and all we don't need that so if you have okay. basic understanding of uh, a sql that is like a uh, sql statements select right. insert yes. update yes. delete uh, basic right. stuff that would right. do and okay. second thing is since we will be working on, on a ubuntu system right okay. so linux system so basic knowledge on for linux will be yeah. good to have but not yeah. ideally just like java so you don't have to have why right? because we are yeah. not working we are not directly working with uh, uh, linux but uh, yeah. we are uh, since uh, we are running programs there interactively uh right. you, so it is good to brush up some skills on uh, some basic linux commands we don't need to go in advance but right. don't worry that part also right so why because uh, you, you brush it, you brush it up right? i don't mean to say yes. no okay. you brush okay. it up uh, some skills once we install and configure some uh, virtual machine right so that, uh, maybe you can spend some time online right. to uh, uh, to uh, to explore some commands and do so right okay. so don't worry so if you have any okay. questions with respect to those commands also right so i can help you on that right i i can okay. explain the commands uh, there and then and there it's we don't have a, i don't uh, need a separate, a separate session for that so okay. if okay. you have any trouble in understanding any command right will pause there stop me there and we'll okay. get the command covered and proceed right so that is not okay. a problem okay okay so one one uh, very quick question so what is so hadoop is apache's uh product so like you have the apache has uh, projects like they have mm. different projects that they release but then mm. there is cloudera then mm. there's hortonworks so what mm. are what are those like like there is uh, hortonworks has a certification cloudera mm. has a certification but all are giving certification for hadoop is it so what what is that uh, it's, it's, it's to, to be very uh, quick <laughs> to answer this very quickly right so hadoop is one uh, forget about hard and works or forget about cloudera so they are okay. not existed right now right so now okay. only thing that is there is uh, hadoop right so for us right okay. so so hadoop is a distribution open source distribution this is just like linux so if you heard if you heard about linux linux is a free and open source software okay. right so yes. then what is red hat uh, red hat linux red hat. why do you red. pay for license uh, why do you yes. pay license fee for red hat so it is for support that you are paying right so okay. same okay. is the case with hadoop right so hadoop is free and open source anybody can take and use it but thing right. is that so so companies like cloudera and hortonworks what they do oh. is so they uh -huh. take out this distribution of hadoop and they uh -huh. modify it accordingly they are add new more components they change the user interface so they they add more user experience to it right okay. and then they sell okay. it as a product 
right so now see uh, if you look at the course distribution we first install hadoop right hdfs right. and map and right. then we'll add pick to it so what they right. do is that they add all of these ingredients all these ingredients and package it into your one single product oh okay okay right? so they package it into one single product and then they market it they sell it sell this product right Got it. okay right so that and, uh, and they also offer support for this right so okay. in case if you okay. run into any issues right so you call you reach out those uh, reach out to those vendors so they should right. be able to help you out and they have oh. their own certifications of their own okay. so that is the reason why i am not directly dealing with this so there are many uh, trainings out there so which are uh, more focused on uh, cloud era or hot and works any specific distribution i don't want to go with that why right? because yes. the concept yes. is same everywhere right so if you are learning right. linux so same is the case so if you are yes. uh, if you are learning linux right so you should be able to work on any any environment right? whether it yes. be red hat or uh, linux uh, red hat or red hat linux or ubuntu or some other distribution it doesn't matter to us what the distribution only some look and feel will change some 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 changes will be there right uh -huh. so yes. but uh, but the core stuff remains same so that is why i am going with this distribution of yes. uh, uh, i'm not going with any distribution i'm just taking the core project and then we'll install it set it and try to understand at the okay. end so i'll show you how to how the distribution looks what is the look and feel and how to set it up and you can work okay. it you can easily get along with that so it's not okay. a problem okay 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 uh any other questions you get uh nothing at this the only reason i asked that is because in our office like there is this hot and work people who are coming and uh, mm. trying to set up and it's it's going to start like in the in the fall that is like september october time so that's why i was mm -hmm. curious like what what are they going so they are going to customize it and sell it to us maybe <laughs> Yes, yes this, okay. yeah they already have this product we can set it up so at the end of this uh, training right so i'll show mm -hmm. you how to set up a cloud era distribution maybe in your case so what we will do is we'll try to set up a hot and works distribution rather than oh. cloud era so uh, since uh, so you have a hot and works setup right so we'll try right, right, to set, right. set that up and walk you through that okay 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 thanks okay okay thanks 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 so much yeah thanks for joining bye